How's it going? I'm gonna talk a little bit about you know, what I do to set set up the grinder here. Um, not gonna be like a how-to or a full in-depth, just a little bit of, on the dressers and how I set up the tooth to get a good grind. Okay, so you got your uh, dressers here, you know, that dress the wheel. And I like to see what angle these are at. Um, you, know, you could get a, a digital angle finder. And what I found is when I'm setting these, I'm measuring the block here on the flat. You can do you know, anywhere you want that's flat that indexes in the line of the um, dresser here. I try to measure it in the same spot. So I'll raise it up all the way until it bottoms out. I measure it at the same spot every time and I hold it up here. I'm running about 16 and a half degrees. And it's good, you know, I'll zero this right here on the bench on the same spot every time. And I'll make sure it's zeroed. I'll check the angle. I'll set it back on the table to make sure it, it wasn't drift because these do drift a degree here and there depending on how much you spent. Same thing um, with the side plate dresser. I'll lift it all the way up till it bottoms out. And I'll take a reading off the bottom flat here. 25 and a half. And I'll put it back on my bench. Zero, zero. I'll recheck it. 25.5. So that's that. So I kind of dial in my stone once, you know, and I write those numbers down. Um, and once I find a grind that I like, I can duplicate it if I mess or if something comes loose. Um, and I do use the stops here through a wing nut on them so I can set them so each tooth is grinding the same. Um, and I'll, I'll dry fit the tooth so it's the corner's pretty dang close. Um, You really want to make sure that this is seated in there on the rider. Put a little back pressure. You want to make sure everything is nice and tight and solid. Because if this is up just a little bit, a couple thousandths, it's going to, it's going to throw it off. So I'll just grind this tooth here. I hold it there, let it clean itself up, pull it away, and I'll index to the next tooth. Make sure everything's tight, seated in there. Good to go. And I don't tap the tooth, I just do a nice steady pressure. Once I get the first tooth exactly how I want it, I'll set it in there and I'll run this. I'll, you know, this will be loose on my first tooth. I'll run it till it hits the plate. Tighten my wing nut. And I'm good. Check the tooth with a flashlight, magnifying glass. I use a magnifier on my phone to make sure I'm getting exactly what I want. Um, and the main thing is, is when you flip to the other side, these come shimmed from the factory, right? Because if the motor's cattywampus, one side to the other, it's gonna be off, right? So when you flip it over to the other side, it needs to be dead nuts, and if it's not, you can basically shim the motor so the motor, you know, the disc is running in parallel with your arm. Mine came good. Mine came with two shims already in it. Uh, so it's dead nuts from the left side to the right side. Um, and that's really important because when you flip it over here, even if you're just a little bit off and you're making slight adjustments to line it up, your angles are going to be different on one side or the other. If you turn this, 
or raise this or whatever you do to adjust it, it's going to be different. It's going to take more wood or less or it's going to be more aggressive. So you want it the same on both on both sides. I got lucky. I had to do zero shimming or nothing. You know, mine was perfect right out of the box. I just did this one earlier today. Turn my light on here. I'm dragging it on the metal table, but you, know, you want the nice inside of the stone to intersect at the top of the working corner of the tooth. You don't want to be touching the tie straps at all. Um, and all that is accomplished with, with the settings here on the newer on the newer grinder. Um, so it's just a little bit of how I, how I set mine up. Um, it's definitely a learning curve. It's not like a round grinder where you set it up and you go, there's a lot of adjusting and tweaking. And you know, I got it set up for this chain, but I'm, the other chain that I'm gonna sharpen next might have a longer cutters or shorter cutters. So I'm gonna have to tweak it a little bit. Um, and that's, that's where I use these stops with the wing nuts, just to make sure everything's the same. You, know, you can measure, you can measure what's sticking out with, with a pair of um, dial calipers to make sure you're even. Um, on the Madsen's website, there's some good videos of how to check to see if your arm is true on both sides. There's a little test you can do to see what side you need to shim and, and you're only shimming a couple thousandths at a time there's four bolts so you need to do it. it's kind of trial and error um, but yeah I'll be running some tests with some really good square ground chain and the, and the hexa chain I'll be cutting some timber here pretty soon and seeing how they pull and how they feed and, and how long they last because um, that's the tricky part is for a good work chain you want something super sharp but if you go too sharp then it's going to dull really fast so you gotta find the happy medium of a good sharp chain that's gonna be reliable so you're not going through three or four chains in a day. So if you got any questions, uh, leave a comment. And uh, I can do in-depth more videos if you guys find it interesting or if I don't answer a question. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching.